Hello and welcome to the Top Agent Podcast. My name is Costa and I chat with top real estate agents to discuss their successes, tips, and marketing strategies. This podcast series is brought to you by web for realty the leading provider in real estate marketing tools to grow your business. If you're looking to attract leads, build relationships, and close more deals, go to webforrealty.com to learn more. In this episode, I'm speaking with Steve Augustine, a realtor in Hamilton, Ontario. After touring with his band, Thousand Foot Crutch, for nearly 20 years and selling nearly 2 million albums worldwide, Steve got into real estate and has been a top agent ever since. This is an episode you really don't want to miss. I hope you enjoy. All right, Steve, thank you so much uh, for taking the time to chat with me. I I truly do appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. All right. So you have a pretty unique and amazing story, to say the least. Um, Why don't you kick things off by just telling our audience a bit about your background and how you got into the real estate game? Um, well, it started, uh, I'm currently 41 and back when I was 24, I, um, approached my mom about, uh, purchasing a rental property together. I had a few friends that, uh, knew some people that had rental properties and, um, a few guys were doing pretty well in the student rental game. So, uh, I approached her about that and, and we did buy a student rental in Hamilton, uh, in Hamilton together. And it was, a it was a kind of a smashing success from the standpoint of cash flow, um, but one lesson I learned on that little trip was just that, uh, you know, when students are moving out of their own homes and it's their first time out of the house, they're, uh, they're calling you every 10 seconds about every little thing that happens all day. So it, uh, it wasn't without its sort of grief along the way, uh, from the standpoint of just management, but from a financial perspective, it was a really great sort of shot in the arm to our financial picture. So a couple of years later, we ended up selling that and, uh, and then moved towards doing some flips together. And, uh, and then I continued to do that even on my own and with a few different business partners, got into doing some, some, uh, flipping of property and, and did pretty well at that as well. And just kind of had fun, fun doing it, to be honest. I really enjoy a ton of, of that process. Um, just making something that's kind of fallen apart new again and, um, buyers seem to resonate with that as well. Uh, on, when homes are on the market that show really well, of course they they seem to sell better uh, for obvious reasons. So it was uh, it was a pretty good little business going, and that just sort of um, naturally progressed to the point where I had people approaching me pretty regularly, just asking questions about real estate and how they could flip a property, how they could have an investment uh, property and an income stream from that, etc. And just uh, kind of naturally grew and organically grew into probably putting 20 or 30 deals together a year with, uh, with, you know, friends and realtors that I didn't know. And, um, just, just kind of helping, helping people through that process. So long story short, I just thought one day, man, I need to get my real estate license, um, and, uh, and take the next step with that. So I did. And, um, I got out of flipping property just cause it's a bit of a conflict of interest with, uh, my investor clients. So now I just help them on the buying side and, and selling side. Wow. That's amazing. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, so how long have you been a licensed realtor now? So I've been a realtor for three and a half years, three and a half years. And are you, are you still doing that 20 to 30 deals per year? Much more. Much more now. Okay, perfect. Yeah, much more now just because <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, you know, now able to just sort of help anybody and everyone. And uh, so it's just kind of opened the door uh, on that business uh, in a big way. Okay. Uh, so in the few years you, you've been practicing as a real estate agent, uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you faced? I would say um, at first I kind of felt a little bit out of place age-wise, <laughs> um, which sounds funny being 41 because it's not like that's that young. But uh, in this industry, there's uh, an old guard for sure um, from the standpoint of you know the guys that have been doing it for 30 and 40 years and, and really have their – um, their names built and their brand built. And at first it sort of felt like maybe I was a little young. So that was something that I just sort of had to combat, um, started to market towards a younger demographic for sure. Um, to try and capture people that were more my age and, uh, that would probably, you know, uh, be more interested in working with me. Um, that was probably the first challenge that I had. Um, To be honest with you, though, like I think I had a pretty good base built because of that past experience that we talked about. So I, I didn't have a huge barrier to entry 
to, to have a business right away. You know, it was more just getting new clients that I didn't know, um, where I felt that sort of strain where it was like, I, you know, I don't think people took, took me as seriously just from an age perspective. Um, and, uh, you know, that was something I just had to combat more from the standpoint of marketing, I think. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, something I see a lot of realtors and it, entrepreneurs, I can say in general, struggle with is having a, a structured daily routine. I, I think that's especially tough for realtors because you don't really have a fixed schedule in your day to day. Things can sort of change on the fly in a lot of cases, depending on the client schedules, for example. Um, are there any daily rituals or routines that you do to help your plan your days a bit better and help you get started on the right foot that you're able to share? Definitely, man. I, um, uh, in, I've been self-employed since I was 16 and I've, so I've always sort of been a, a good self-starter, um, from the standpoint of just getting up in the morning and wanting to make forward progress. And I've been really blessed to have some incredible business partners as well, uh, along the way, uh, that have all shared that quality you know uh we just have that sense that uh you know everyone's getting up and, and getting after it and trying to make forward progress on the business on a daily basis and that pushes you as well uh real estate's the first business i've had completely on my own where i've just uh solo uh you know on my own every day and just kind of having to get up and get, and get after it uh, but i've found that to be freeing in some ways too so it's been kind of fun but um definitely some routine and some ritual for sure from the standpoint of of running the business every day uh, i usually start with um jumping into my crm and just sort of keeping in contact with all past clients so i spend probably about a half hour to, to an hour every morning, just sort of going through my list of past clients. I use a, a CRM to help me stay organized with that and, um, and just contacting them, keeping in touch, saying hi, seeing what's new. Sometimes I'll check their, um, you know, social media posts or, or, you know, things that I've seen, uh, since the last time I spoke with them, uh, just ask them how that's going, you know, maybe they had a baby or a birthday or bought a, you know, you know, bought a new car or something like that and just sort of try to connect with them and, um, and, uh, just say hi and, and keep in touch. That's probably the, the first thing I would do every day. And then after that, I just try to stay really clean and organized on all communications. So email, text, I go through any past texts that, I uh, haven't answered yet emails that I haven't answered yet. Try to make sure I clean that all up in the morning so I can start my day feeling like uh, all my communication is is cleaned up and, and taken care of. Perfect. How, how often do you reach out to your past clients? It depends on where they are, uh, what, where they are, I guess, in the cycle of potentially buying or selling um, or just a past client. Um, so past clients I reach out to every 90 days and then I've, I reach out to current sort of leads, like people that have reached out to me, but I haven't met with them yet. Um, they've reached out to say they're interested in making a purchase or making a sale. I try to reach out every seven days to those uh, th those people, and then um, and then you know I've got different categories set up. There's probably about 15 categories I have set up with all different timelines on them, depending on you know where they are in in the cycle of buying and selling. Yeah, you know what? That's really good advice. Uh, I think in a people business like real estate and actually most other industries, the follow up and engagement process with existing and past clients is so important. Um, how much business would you say you get off of your referrals? Man, it's got to be 90% or something. Um, I haven't actually like calculated that number, but you know, I can think back pretty quickly to say the last six months and I can probably count on a couple of hands how many times I've had a client that I didn't know reach out right uh, through somebody, you know, it's almost always referral. And, um, and I think that communication piece really, um, like that we were talking about the, you know, following up with past clients every day that really helps uh, spur that on because you're constantly reconnecting with them and keeping front of mind. So when they're in a conversation with a friend or a colleague and real estate comes up, your name is the first thing coming to their mind. So they start to talk about you. Um, so I think that I agree with you, you know, that communication piece is, is super, super important. And obviously referral in this business is, I think, everybody seems to share the, the same sentiment that referral is kind of the, the name of the game, right? Yeah. Another a great way to keep in touch, um, social media. And, uh, I can see that you're pretty active on social media, which is great to see. Um, 
By the way, I also you're you're part of a pretty famous band, TFK, uh, which has uh, over one million likes on Facebook, which is pretty insane. Um, however, I also see that you've been able to garner a very big following on your individual social media accounts for your real estate side of things. Um, any tips you can share on social media and how others can leverage these social platforms in their marketing strategies? Yeah, we, um, yeah, with the band, obviously we had a company work for us, uh, think swells their name and they, um, they are really, really proactive with social media. Obviously that's their business. They meet directly with Facebook and YouTube and, uh, you know, in person monthly just to sort of, um, keep up on the algorithm and the things that are changing and, um, how to sort of meet people where they're at best. And, um, so I would say, you know, I would say I've learned a fair amount of little tricks along the way from those guys, more about just times to post and ways to post and hashtags to use, et cetera. But at the end of the day, I think it really just comes down to being genuine, posting about things that are relatable to people and that relate to your business. And then, you know, truly just commenting on, on, on posts uh, of your, your core following and, it's just staying engaged, right? I think at the end of the day, it's just time. I don't think you can ever replace it with anything. There's, I know there's bots and stuff out there on Instagram, et cetera. But uh, I think at the end of the day, you can always see through that stuff. So just being personable and, um, you know, making comments, liking on, on things at the end of the day, that's how I've done it. It's not too, uh, too exciting from the standpoint of tips and tricks, but I think at the end of the day, it's just, uh, it's just important to be genuine and, and truly have an interest in your clients and keep in touch with them in every way. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, it's really easy for, for someone to see past uh, not being genuine, especially yeah. on social media. Uh, what would you say to the realtors who, who don't have social media and say, you know, my business is all about referrals. I don't need social media. Um. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I don't know what I would say to them. Uh, I guess I would just, my own experience being that social media has been a huge, huge lifeline to my business and to my listings. I've probably sold, I don't know, 20 houses in the last year off of social media. Um, you know, even, even this week there was two, uh, two different offers that I put together for properties I had listed that were one from Instagram, one from Facebook um, you know, and when, when asking them where they first saw it, that's where they first saw it. And then of course they, they follow the yellow brick road and get to the, the custom website you've built for it or hop on realtor.ca and look up the address. Um, but at the end of the day, that was the first point of contact for them. So, you know, I'm seeing it as a huge, uh, lifeline to my business and, and a huge part of the marketing footprint. So, uh, I would just say, I think you're missing out. Yeah, totally. Well, that speaks for itself. The fact that, you know, you, you generate business off people who found you on social media. So it doesn't get more clear cut than that, I'd say. Um, for sure. How do you, how do you see uh, technology changing real estate in the next five to 10 years, whether it's, you know, related to social media or, or other? Yeah, there's lots of little different pieces coming out. Obviously, all these pieces that are helping realtors be more connected to their clients and be more connected to their listings, um, the amount of just exposure that we're getting, like I know through Remax, we're like 40-something languages. I think it's 44 languages now, 120 countries that your listing goes out into. Um, it's pretty crazy. Obviously, technology is breaking all kinds of barriers. Instead of doing print and magazines, et cetera, it's just kind of out there in one day, you know, everywhere. I mean, anyone can see it across the world. That's huge. Um, but then the social media piece is obviously opening some, some doors there for sure to, to connectivity with people directly. And I think we're all in the same place. I think anyway, I, I guess I'll speak for myself, but it feels like technology's almost gone a little too far where we're reaching into people's lives so closely and you're getting text messages now. And, you know, it's getting to that place where you almost want it to take a little bit of a step back. I, I guess I think maybe moving forward, things might become a little more, um, maybe refined and simpler uh, as much as I know technology is going crazy and everything's uh, growing like gangbusters. I, I wonder if things might become a little bit, uh, we're almost might, might pare down a little bit um, and be a little more one place. You know, we're all fighting for that one stop shop kind of thing, but 
sometimes I look at the bro the way brokerages are set up and I wonder if at some point somebody doesn't, doesn't sort of take over, you know, and there's like more of a monopoly um, situation. Yeah, that, that's an interesting point about uh, social media and, and technology getting into people's lives uh, more so than ever. Uh, on the flip side, you can say that this is simply just the new normal and you either adjust with it or or get left behind. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably fair. You know, I think you have to stay on top of it because especially from a business perspective, you just have to know what's out there and what's being used and 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 how to reach people otherwise you're just going to you're definitely going to get left behind, right? Yeah. Um I have a, another question, sort of business related. I know you uh you spent just reading your bio a little bit. You spent uh about a decade touring with the band uh, and I'm sure you've gained a, a very unique and priceless experience overall with that. Um, are there any insights that you've been able to transfer over from the music business to your real estate business? Yeah, um, I should probably update that bio. It was about 20 years, actually, we tra traveled, yeah, about 3,500 shows across the world, which is kind of crazy. But looking back at it now, um, you know, it's not like the band's dead or anything right now, but we've slowed down on the touring side just with families and uh, getting older and you know you've got other other things that take your time as well but um definitely from the standpoint of the business side there's been a ton of um things that i've brought over obviously that whole social media piece was something that you learn a ton about in that world um learning how to reach people um that way and some digital marketing targeted ads etc so i do a ton a ton of that with my business that really was just I just kind of like copied and pasted from what we were doing with the band into my, my real estate business. And it's definitely paid dividends. Um, but the biggest thing I think at the end of the day is probably what we kicked it off talking about is just that self-starting, right? Waking up every day and just getting after it. Um, the hardest work I've ever done in my life for sure was, was the music business and touring. And, um, that, that world is, is difficult. You know, you're up at five in the morning to catch a six thirty flight, uh, most days and uh, and uh, you know you're traveling a ton and tired and working long long hours and by the time you get on stage at 10 o'clock at night you you know you've been up a long time and and put a ton of effort in and then also from the standpoint of just uh, supply and demand I mean the amount of bands that are out there always trying to take your spot having to just strategize and 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 stay ahead of technology and also um, just the way people are listening to music, where they're listening to music, constantly trying to stay ahead of all that and at the same time make a business of it so you can you can pay your bills, right? Um, yeah, yeah. It, you, you can never escape competition, that's for sure. No, and it, it's good for you, for sure. But it, uh, yeah, in that business, it's, 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 uh, it's crazy. <laughs> it's totally crazy. So, yeah, no, it was, it was a fun, uh, you know, obviously touring is, is great. I, you know, you love the, the music and the creation of music. That creative side is what drives you. Um, but the, the traveling part of it is, is the hard part for sure. Yeah, nice. Great advice. Um, switching gears a little bit. Uh, I'm a numbers guy. You touched on um, it a little bit earlier in our conversation. Uh, I love, uh, you know, getting into revenue commissions, all that fun stuff. Are you able to share how many... Uh, transactions you closed last year or plan to close in the next 12 months or give a range it's funny i got asked this question yesterday i didn't know the answer so i looked it up <laughs> nice. uh, but it was uh last year i think it was 57 um transactions that i closed last year and um definitely ahead of that for this year it's definitely growing i'm not sure uh you know where i'll end up at the end of this year right now but um but uh, it's it's growing, which is always good, right? And at the end of the day, if you're you're not growing, you're probably dying, right? So um, you, you want to be moving forward always. And uh, I just was able to hire a full time assistant here in, in the last few months, which has been a huge um, you know shot in the arm, just giving me a little bit more time to be just that little bit more organized and and uh, have a little bit more time for the things that that I need to do that I can't have somebody else do, and. Um, that's been that's been fantastic as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, big time numbers. Thanks so much for sharing that. Um, look, Steve, I do want to be mindful of your time. I end off each chat with what I call the top three. So, uh, number one, your top real estate or business book. That's a good question. Um, I'm actually in the middle of 
right now a pretty cool it's it's called the mark uh luxury marketing group and it's a um mike lafito does does this um does this like course it's more of a course than a book but there's a book attached to it and um it's all about luxury marketing and understanding how to market luxury property and um the things that people look for in that world uh, and becoming a luxury specialist. That's been my focus uh, the last couple months. I've just been digging into that every spare second I have. And um, so I would say that's probably my number one at the moment. Okay, cool. I'm going to check that one out. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. Nice. Uh, number two, your top vacation spot. I would say in all the traveling I've done with the band, um, We'd be about 400 planes a year. <laughs> and uh, so by the time I got home, I didn't want to go anywhere else. So I would say uh, in all my traveling, though, probably my favorite spot that I would want to go back to would be Switzerland. Switzerland, really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. incredible there. It's very nice. beautiful and people are incredibly friendly. Um, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful country to, to check out if you haven't been. No, I no, haven't been. Uh, definitely, it's on my bucket list, but uh, it's not too often that you hear Switzerland as a top vacation spot. Yeah, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and number three, you said you're 41 years old. So if you can go back 21 years, what do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Uh, I'd probably say, I would probably say the the power of investing. Um, I probably would have gotten into uh, more traditional investing at that age if I had known better, <laughs> and you know, and put uh, put a couple hundred dollars a month away uh, at that age. The compounding that that occurs by the time you're 65, you're pretty set. Yeah, um, yeah. people take that compound interest for granted. That's for sure. Yeah, it's not something you're thinking about when you're 20, right? No, not at all. <laughs> and if you can think about it when you're 16, you're really, really set. So <laughs> yeah, good advice. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, obviously, you're not taking money with you. It's it's not, um, you know, but when we live here, we still need it to live every day, right? So, Absolutely. And when you, start, you know, when you have kids and you're starting to think about weddings and, uh, you know, school and everything else that you have to pay for in the future, uh, it would have been great to make that move a little younger. Yeah, sound advice for sure. Yeah. And if people wanted to get a hold of you or reach out, where's the best place they can find you? Uh, you can start at steveaugustine.com and uh, all contact info is there. So you can always reach out. My cell's there, email's there. I'd love to hear from you. All right, perfect. Steve, thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with me and uh, I would love to do it again sometime. Awesome, Costa. I appreciate you, man. All right, Steve. Have a good one. You too. Bye for now. Take care. Thank you so much for listening to the Top Agent Podcast by web for realty uh, By the way, we're providing exclusive promos to our listeners. Visit webforrealty.com slash topagent and get your first month on us. That's webforrealty.com slash topagent to get your first month of service completely free. Until next time, over and out. Peace.